Excellent. Uh, <coughs> so let's just continue. Compactness, that means for any sequence, for every sequence. Oh, I should write death. Sequentially compact. That means for every sequence. Okay. In A, it has a convergent subsequence that converges to a point in A. Now notice two things. This is different from close in that close requires that every convergent sequence has a s converges to a point in A. This says every sequence in A has a convergent subsequence that converges to a point in A. So it, this is a little bit <coughs> stricter, much harder. And you should notice it sequentially compact implies closed. <coughs> So, for example, okay. so A is sequentially compact. Uh, let's see, what else is there to do? So, so there's another definition I should teach you, known as totally bounded. So a totally bounded set means there exists x1, comma, dot, 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 xn in the set of A such that for any epsilon, and remember, let's say n, this is finite, finite number of points, big difference. For any epsilon greater than zero, you can find a union of i equals 1 to n. Xn and this can change. Xn such that you can draw distance balls. Xn spacing epsilon, and that A is contained in union of these balls. Very related to compact. So another important theorem we should know: sequentially theorem. Uh, A is sequentially compact. And remember, sequentially compact by Bolzano Weisschoss means compact. And remember, we have to prove these if and only if A is totally bounded. And oh, by the way, all the examples that we've been doing, it is in a metric space. Metric space. If we're only if A is totally bounded and A is okay, totally bounded. Complete. And when we use completeness, complete, it means Cauchy complete. So every Cauchy sequence <coughs> converges in this space. Oh, now, something's nice. This is okay. If we're dealing, all these that we've talked about for this entire lecture had to do with general metric spaces. But if we're in the space Rn, we can use the Heine Borel theorem. You see, I remember when I was younger, when I first learned about uh, compactness, I was given definition complete. I was given definition that you're compact if it's closed and bounded. Not true for general metric spaces! Only for Rn. So, Heine Borel theorem. Heine Borel. So, uh, if A, the 
subset of Rn. Oh, remember, once again, all this stuff, subset of M, where M is a metric space with distance function D. If A is a subset of Rn, remember, in Rn, it's automatically defined to have the, the regular distance function that you all know about the norm. The norm is, is subtracted. Simple. If A is a subset, well, norm, the square root is square. Mm. If A is a subset of Rn, A is compact if and only if A is closed and bounded. So, a simple example closed ball bounded by epsilon. This guy, compact. Unbounded guy, not compact. Also, open ball. Ah, cannot draw open balls. Not compact. Oh, by the way, my definition of totally bounded, I make the assumption that x1 up to xn is not, it's in the space, metric space M, where A is a subset of M. However, sometimes, some books, they define it as the set, as the points, or must be an A. <coughs> they're equivalent. You can prove that they're equivalent, either way. Very simple. So. Only useful if you want to prove probably contradiction. You say it has to be in this end and it ends up not being in the it is, it is, it doesn't really matter. I, I never I don't know, maybe you can't prove that way. Maybe you can. I, I never seen a proof like that. But uh, maybe you can do something. So now what else is there? Ooh. <coughs> Let's talk about path connected. So Intuitive definition of path connected. I have a point here and a point here. And I can draw a path such that the path lies entirely in the set. <coughs> simple. However, some things not that simple. Let's look at line. So X comma Y in two dimensions, Y equal sine of one over X and the set, this guy, this set, for, and let's see, the line Y equals zero, Y is less zero, one, zero, is less than equal to Y, less than equal to one, and X equals zero. This guy. This guy looks like this. This is the Y version. And this is the crazy sinusoid. It gets really, fluctuates really fast here. It near here, it goes, it, it is very fast. It goes up and up and down very quickly. Is this path connected? It turns out that this is actually path connected, but you can't tell. Intuition, very difficult. So we use an official definition. Yeah, one moment. Ah. Okay. Okay, very sorry. Just I do not want to mess this up because I remember on the midterm that I just took, this was a big question. I think I wasn't rigorous in my definition, so I'll just do that really quick, but first. <coughs> 